Hey everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to introduce you to motion retargeting. So we're going to talk about the basic UI setup, we're going to talk about what motion retargeting is, um, how it allows for stable performance despite different character scales, it allows you to uh, apply the animation to, to characters with different proportions um, and have the same solid result. Uh, we're going to talk about retargeting limbs and matching motion bone position and all that fun stuff in just a moment here. Okay, so on the screen we have uh, my three helpers that are gonna demonstrate uh, some of this stuff here. We have uh, Ted on the left. Uh, you can find him under Actor, Character, G3360, and G3360 Human, and he's down here at the bottom. Ted S, the 45 degree angle facing Ted there. S2 is 90 degrees facing, okay? And Martha is up here. And the third guy is, uh, we'll call him Frank. Okay, Frank is from a content pack on the uh, content store uh, from an artist called Frank's Pencil and office workers right here, employee number two. Again, this is for separate purchase on the content store. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at first at these characters' bone structures. Uh, to do that, I'm gonna apply an animation first. So we're gonna go to animation here. Um, we'll go to uh, motion, and we're going to a G3 human, turners, male, and side-facing motions. And there's a punch combo here somewhere. There you go. We'll just apply it to all of our characters. Uh, apply it to Ted. You can see he does this cool looking punch combo. Go back to frame one here. Apply it to uh, Martha, and then we're going to save it out. Uh, we're going to save it out and apply it to our third character, uh, Frank, here. Okay, so you can see, despite the uh, vast difference in scales between these two characters, we have uh, accurate re motion retargeting on both of them. Now, I'm going to press F3 to go into my timeline here, and I'm going to open up the motion track. If we have object related track selected, this option right here, we can select any character and it will open up that character's tracks. And if we open up the motion track here, you can see we have a yellow motion clip for called punch. Uh, the yellow means it contains motion retargeting data. Okay. Um, so to do, to, let's, let's, take, let's take a look first at our character scale. Uh, we're going to save our characters or save our motion. So I'm going to take my project link slider here all the way down so we can see it appear in the timeline here at the bottom. There you go. You can more accurately place it by clicking in here. And we'll just place it for the duration of our clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this motion uh, out from Ted. Okay. If your project length is only the same length as your as your clip there, it's only going to save that amount of animation data. Okay. So if I wanted to save the entire animation for the entire project up until this point, I can go to my uh, animation tab, go to custom here, and under motions, we'll just use this plus key. Okay. And we'll uh, call this uh, I don't know something like punch combo punch combo and you can see a little Ted there in the uh, in the thumbnail okay and then we can apply this punch combo to uh, Frank who has uh, again vastly different proportions but we'll get the same accurate uh, results okay no foot sliding anything like that we're all good for all of the characters okay so this is all done through the magic of motion retargeting okay let's take a look at our character scales really quick um, their their main bones if we select them we go to the 2d motion key editor I'll just uh, close down the uh, timeline for now. You can see Ted has, you know, fairly short stubby legs. Uh, if we click on Martha, she has long slender legs. Okay, this is going to be important. Uh, and Frank over here has, you know, fairly a long torso, but his legs are, you know, proportionally a bit shorter than the rest of his body. Okay, so uh, three separate characters, three totally different proportions, but the motion retargeting allows us to get accurate results for all of them. Okay, uh, the same motion can be applied without foot sliding or anything. So this is a huge uh, uh, improvement. Okay, let's close this down for now. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to apply a different animation to my characters. This is gonna this is called a root motion where our characters are actually gonna change position. So to do that, I'm gonna go here to animation and template and Turner's mail, uh, side facing motion. There's a walking one down here, like a sneaky walk. Walking sneaky. Okay. Uh, now use the one, there's there's two lines behind it, the character walking here on the icon because that's going to be the uh, the root motion. This indicates the character is actually changing their transform position. Uh, so we'll just apply it to uh, Mr. Ted over here. And then we'll apply it to uh, Martha. You can see Martha will overtake Ted in just a couple of steps and we'll talk about why that is in just a moment. And we'll apply it to uh, to Frank here as well. Okay, so we have these characters like just, uh, you know, sneaking along here. Um, and let's take a look at the motion bone retargeting. So I'm going to select uh, Martha here. We'll press F3 and go into the timeline. And I'm going to just go ahead and uh, go into the motion track here and extend my project length up to the length of this clip here, just like this. Okay, and let's take a look at the motion retargeting uh, panel. Now, there's a few different ways you can access this. The easiest way is probably just to double click the, your, your motion clip 
it'll pop up right here. You can see motion retargeting. You can also right click on your motion clip and select motion retargeting from the bottom here. Okay. Uh, you can also right click on your character and select retargeting settings from your character. All right. And you can also go up here into uh, edit and motion clip and motion retargeting. Okay. And that'll open it up as well. Now you'll see uh, the characters will, um, well, Martha right now has a big blue bone kind of superimposed over her character sprites. This is called the motion retargeting bone, uh, the motion bone. Okay. And there's purple uh, points here on the ends. Those are the end effectors for your character. And that's what basically uh, drives your anim animation. We use end effectors and uh, we talk about end effectors more in different tutorials. Uh, they're essentially used to kind of just constrain your character's uh, feet and her hands in certain areas. Uh, and those are indicated by the magenta points right here. Okay. Um, you can see that her motion bone is quite large. Okay. Even at the top part here, it's uh, larger beyond her, uh, her arms. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Ted's motion bone. Okay, so if we select Ted, we'll just go right click and retarget settings there. Notice his motion bone is pretty small and, and puny. Okay, and that's because his legs are actually pretty short and stubby. Uh, if there's a, a, low, a smaller distance between your character's feet and, and the hip, the motion bone won't scale as large. All right, let's take a look at Frank's as, as comparison here as well. So uh, if we go to Frank and do the same thing here. Um, you notice that Frank's is, uh, you know, it's larger, but not quite as large as Martha's. And again, that's because the motion bone scales proportionally to the distance between your character's feet and the hips. Because most motions are going to be foot based. And you'll notice that for 99% of motions, you're going to have the left foot, left toe, right foot, and right toe all checked. Okay. And the line to motion bone will be checked. We'll talk more about this a little bit later on. But for characters with like longer uh, feet to hip ratio, I guess, you're going to have a larger motion bone um, that's going to mostly take over your character's sprites um, if they're, you know, um, disproportional like, like most of these characters are. But that's why I'm choosing them. Now, retargeting needs a stable motion source. Uh, if you export from a previous version uh, prior to Crazy Talk Animator 3.3 with foot sliding, unfortunately, there's no uh, solution for this. Um, but you need a, a stable motion source so all of the motions... Uh, that are created after that in Cartoon Animator 4 will have the ability for motion retargeting. They will contain motion bone data. And again, to find out if they do, you can click a, a, look at your clip there and you can see that it's yellow and that means it contains the motion bone data. Okay, let's take a look at modifying at uh, a simple uh, example of align to motion bone pose, okay? So I'm gonna use uh, Ted for this, or not Ted, uh, Fre Frank, Frank, that's his name, right? Frank for this one, okay? We just named him arbitrarily there. Uh, and I'm going to go uh, take Frank into composer mode here. Okay, so in composer mode, we'll just go ahead and continue. Don't worry about that. I'm going to modify Ted's or Frank's original pose here. I guess he just kind of looks like a Ted. Anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and edit the pose. Now, generally, your side facing characters will have this A pose, okay, where their uh, arms are at a 45 degree angle facing downwards. Um, if we edit pose and say that Ted's natural or Frank's natural state here is. Uh, up here like this. Um, he likes to walk around with his arms up all the time. Um, that's that's fine. Okay, we'll just go ahead and, and uh, deselect edit pose and see what happens if we go back to our stage mode here. And you can see right now, if we double click on that motion uh, clip right there, we deselect align to motion bone pose. What's gonna happen is Ted's arms, or Fr uh, Frank's arms rather, are gonna be up there. Okay, so we're not aligning to the motion bone, okay? Um, now the, the clip, the, uh, the walking forward, the sneaky, sneaky walk clip that we applied, it already has the, the stable motion source. But if we take off that align to motion bone pose, our character is going to, you know, have arms that go up uh, wildly like this, which is kind of weird. Um, a lot of people don't walk like that, I believe. But if we select align to motion bone pose, that's going to basically align our character, his positions to the motion bone, okay? And you can see a more accurate result. So regardless of your character's initial pose, uh, what the align to motion, bo uh, align to motion bone pose uh, option here can do is align your character uh, to that motion bone and get uh, better results, more accurate results, okay? Now, uh, I think that's all we need to, uh, fr uh, Frank and uh, Ted for here. I finally got their names right. We can uh, delete uh, Frank there and delete Ted. And let's focus on the motion retargeting for Martha here, okay? Uh, because Martha is very unique in that her, her leg to, uh, her foot to hip ratio there is quite long. So again, let's right click her, uh, go to retargeting settings. 
Just a little bit about the UI as well. If you want to change any of your bone uh, settings, you can go up here to bone display. You can choose to show or hide your motion bone. You can change the color. Uh, I don't know, pink maybe. Okay. Um, you can, uh, we'll just take it back to blue. Uh, you can change the size of your bones. If you want to have really large and easy to see motion bone points, you can change it up to uh, 100 from 70 and opacity. Pretty straightforward stuff. Just change it to like 20 or whatever, depending on if, how much you want to see uh, your motion bone. Okay, I'll just leave it at the default settings here and let's continue on. Now, like I said earlier, most motions are going to be foot based. So in general, the foot, your foot boxes are always going to be checked like left foot, left toe, right foot, right toe. Okay, let's see what happens if we deselect one of those. Let's deselect the right foot and the right toe. You'll notice that right away, it'll kind of like really mess up the, uh, the sprite there and it'll kind of be all crunched up. So what's going to happen here? Take a look at when, when we take that step, it's going to float like uh, between these frames here, we're going to float up and down. Okay, you see our character kind of slide up and down. Um, this position right here on her, on her foot. Let's zoom in on it really quick so you can see a bit better. So you can see the foot will move up and down like this. And obviously, unless her foot is kind of going into the ground, we don't want that, uh, you know, up and down motion. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we uh, select retargeting for the right foot and the right toe. Okay. And that's going to put it into an accurate position. And as a result, you're going to see a solid step on the ground and no floating. Okay. And that's exactly what we want. We're using those end effectors to kind of just drive our character's uh, foot sprites into the correct position, okay? Using that uh, motion bone data. Now, because there's so many different types of characters and so many different types of motions, this isn't a universal rule for all motions. I'm gonna show you an example here. Uh, I'm gonna bring in another character. We'll go to um, actor, uh, G3, 360 here, uh, and human. Uh, actually, let's go to G3 here, this human here and we're going to use the elastic uh, female side facing right here. Okay, I'll just bring her in. And I'm going to apply a uh, running motion to her. Okay, let's go to uh, animation, um, motion, G3 humans, Turner's male, and there's side facing, there's a run. Uh, run, where are we here? Okay, so this time we're going to use a uh, run uh, loop. Okay, you notice that there's no lines behind the, the character on the icon here. So it's gonna be a stationary, a static motion. Now uh, for this one, if I, uh, let's go to our motion track here. You can see the clip here. Okay, it can, uh, yellow again, so it contains the motion bone uh, retargeting data. Um, if we go into our motion retargeting panel here, notice that for this particular one, we don't have left toe and right toe selected. Okay, and that's because on this particular character, if we take, uh, if we pay close attention to her feet, the way her feet are positioned here, everything looks fine, okay? The retargeting is working as, as, as planned, okay? And we don't see any errors. But if we go to like a frame like this, for example, and let's go ahead and try to uh, click on left toe. Oops, uh, right toe rather. Uh, where is it down here? There we go. So if we click on right toe, notice that the, the motion bone will kind of, uh, in this case, it'll kind of squish the foot up a little bit and the result isn't as good. So this is an example of, you know, one uh, particular combination where you may not want to have the uh, the toe selected, okay? Because it'll look like it's kind of squashing the foot sprite right there, this one over here, and that's not the result that we, we want to go for. So if we, you know, take it like this and we deselect that right toe, we're going to have a better result just like this, okay? It'll be uh, easier to see are just not as not as stretched or not uh, kind of squished all, all together and everything like that. Um, so that's basically an example of uh, when you may not want to have the toe retargeting uh, on. Okay, so let's go ahead and just delete this character. And where's Martha? There she is. She's trying to sneak away. So the last thing I want to talk about here is hand retargeting. And for hand retargeting, I'm going to apply a different motion to uh, Martha here. We're going to go side facing as well. Okay, Turner's uh, side facing for male. And there is a climb uh, pole. All right, this one right here, climb pull, there we go. And again, we're just gonna apply the second uh, loop motion here. All right, pretty easy. Let's just bring our project length slider to the correct position here. Um, okay, so um, let's actually get a, bring in a something, a prop here as a reference. Um, animated props, uh, basic icon. I believe we have a line in here somewhere. Line, there we go. Let's quick and drag that in and let's uh, rotate it to, 30 degrees, or not 30 degrees, 270 will do, or, or else uh, 90 degrees. Let's enter a value of 270 here. There we go. Okay, and let's position this uh, correctly right over here. And I'm just gonna right click on it and remove object animation so we're not, we don't have it moving um, 
because we added it in at frame 33, 32 here. Okay, so here's our character climbing this pole. Now, what we want to do is if you take a look at our hand position here, let's open the motion clip here. Oops. Uh, if you take a, look, take a look at her hand position, like one's kind of way over there. Her it seems like her left hand is okay, but her right hand is grabbing, grabbing something else, okay? Um, so obviously not an ideal scenario. Uh, we want both hands to be positioned along the line uh, where the pole would be, okay? So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, again, go into the motion retargeting. And let's take a look at the retargeting for the hands. Now, for the hands, uh, what we can do is uh, select the left hand, okay? If we select the left hand, it'll be like way over there. We can select the right hand and it'll be way over here. So you're wondering like, you know, why, what's the deal here? Uh, we, what we want to do here is we want to make sure the left hand uh, is at a value of 100, okay? Uh, so it's 100% accurate as to where the uh, the end effector is here on the wrist, okay? And the right hand, the same thing. So we want to do like 100, just like this, okay? And now you're going to see accurate um, positioning of those hands in relation to the position of the motion bones. So right there, okay. So all we, had to, all we have to do is basically just kind of reposition that uh, pole maybe a little bit to the to the right here. Let's just select the pole here and we can just uh, press our right arrow key to move it over a little bit and get into that position there. And again, just right click, remove the animation. And there we go. Okay, so that would be our character climbing the pole with the hands in the uh, correct position. And uh, that's what we're going for. Okay, now one thing I wanted to mention as well here, let's reapply that uh, animation because that's the uh, the micro, that's um, applying a, a motion bone scale for the uh, individual hands. We can do it for the entire body as well. And to do that, let's, let's just apply that same motion, that uh, sneaky walk, okay? Um, ba -da -ba 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 -ba, here we go. And we'll get rid of the uh, um, pole here since we don't need that anymore. Now for the uh, sneaky walk, again, we'll just uh, expand that uh, um, length of our project slider there. Okay, so uh, what we can do is if we go into the retargeting settings here, um, we can scale the entire bone itself. And what, what what happens when we scale the entire bone is if we take it down to like say 60, for example, and press enter, you're gonna see the bone get a lot smaller, but it's still gonna be centered on the character's hips. It's just that the legs are now gonna be a lot shorter uh, on the motion bone and the result that's going to have on our character's movement is she's going to take smaller steps Okay, so you can notice that now she's just taking smaller steps Which is maybe a bit more appropriate for someone in, in high heels uh, doing this motion um, We can even take it even smaller so we can do something like uh, like 30 for example Okay, and that'll have our character our motion will be super small again centered on the hip again But you'll see that doop, just kind of very small steps We can take that up the opposite direction as well to like maybe uh, 120 Okay. Now, generally, this is not recommended. It's going to, you know, scale your motion bone way up, and you'll see that, you know, certain results like this with the with the ankle there. It's, it looks like she's breaking her ankle as she's walking. Okay. So, you know, be careful with the scale that you uh, that you uh, use for your motion bone. Um, but definitely, you can scale down a lot of motions and, and have them take smaller steps or have more minuscule movements uh, as compared to the original motion itself. Let's just take it back down to a hundred there. There we go. And this is the result that we want. Okay, so that's really about all there is to it, guys. Uh, that's kind of scaling different parts, um, scaling the uh, the hands, retargeting the hands, scaling the entire character motion bone. Uh, and that's the basics of the uh, motion bone in Cartoon Animator 4. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned a lot in this uh, tutorial here. Uh, make sure you check out our forums over at forum.relusion.com and all the other uh, videos on our YouTube channel as well as our learning center on the product page for Cartoon Animator 4. And I hope to see you in the next video.